In the beginning stages of a painting, I'm more about laying out the foundation of everything. So I plot major things such as big shapes and bold lines. I always do this before I start actually laying out real detail. I like to consider it kind of like a road map to the painting. As you can see, I laid out the yellow sidewalk and started plotting out the dog. Keep in mind in the beginning stages, there's a lot of correction that goes on. I didn't use a grid, but I regret not using it in the beginning because I didn't get the painting exactly where I wanted. So to be honest, I really struggled at the very beginning and you'll see in a little bit how I added a grid. Also, if it helps, use a palette knife to apply lots of color, especially at the beginning stages. A palette knife is just as much of a tool as a paintbrush when applying paint. And you can even use it to scrape paint as well and get other textures. Try it out, you'll be amazed what you can do. As you can see, I'm starting to draw out the dog and the ears and some of the folds. I'm not going into a lot of detail, I'm just trying to lay out the shape of the dog. Also during this process, I'm correcting some of the issues early on before they become major problems. Some good advice, always get the basics down first before you start detailing and that's what I have been doing and I'm glad I did that because I didn't put the dog in the right spot. Early on I did apply a lot of titanium white with a little bit of cadmium yellow and cadmium orange to brighten the dog because most of his body is in direct sunlight and it was a very sunny day when I took the photo. I did that because I wanted the fur's brightness to stand out. I said it before, I felt like I needed a grid, so later in the stage, that's what I did. As you can see, I laid out some basic lines of 16 squares, and from there I started correcting the painting. I also adjusted the photo that I was using, because I didn't like the way I set up the composition. With the help of the grid, I was able to correct a lot of things, and I feel like the painting is coming along a lot nicer now, thanks to stopping and thinking that something looked off. Mainly I made the dog too small. And I wanted to push the yellow sidewalk more to the left because I didn't really like that big gap of the pavement. One of the things that I am spending a lot of time on are the imperfections. I started off laying out big bold colors to get the lighting prior to adding the detail and also the cracks and crevices that I will later go on and detail even more. I started correcting the face of the dog and the grid helped here. It was not like the face was wrong or off, it was just too small. And based on the new composition I was going with, the dog was a lot bigger. Therefore, as you can see from the underpainting, I was making the face bigger as well. The bricks play a very important role as they help establish perspective and the detail in the end will help establish depth and distance. Even in a close-up painting, depth is very important. I started painting the fur early because I want an idea of how to do the rest of the painting. So it's always good to experiment early on to see if you get a nice little pattern. But here, I'm just laying out colors that are gonna be part of the underpainting. And later, I'm gonna start laying out all the hairs that cover the dog. There's lots of colors. And I had to pay attention very carefully to the photo. Same with the sidewalk. The sidewalk is not just yellow. It's yellow and other colors, like green and orange. I relied heavily on cadmium yellow, but I also used cadmium orange, viridian, and blue, cobalt blue. I laid out these colors before I went into a lot of detail, such as the, all the imperfections, bumps, cracks, and marks from tires or shoes. I thought establishing the face of the dog, such as the eyes, was very important early on. I didn't go into detail yet, but I wanted to get an idea of how the painting's gonna look before I further apply more detail. So I had the lights and darks or should I say, I applied areas where the sun hit. I focused more on sculpting the dog with light and shadow than actual detail, but I did include some detail only to create a roadmap that will help me later. I felt the paws are gonna be very important, so I spent time detailing them and laying out where the fingernails are gonna be. 
because just like in a human portrait, hands will make or break your painting. Same goes for dogs, in my honest opinion. While doing the yellow sidewalk, I paid attention to the transition from yellow to the pavement, and I wanted to add that detail I saw in the photo, which is the plant that's growing through that little crack just underneath the dog's nose. Again, palette knife is a great tool to apply lots of colors. And to get that nice texture of pavement, it's also good to scrape away and spread the paint and use the texture of the canvas to create an illusion of texture and then go back into it with your paintbrush, add in little highlights and details and crevices. And if you have to, blur them, apply, repeat. It's an ongoing process. As you can see, I will go back into it later. But the important thing is layering and lots of layering and paying attention to the highlights and other intricate details like little rocks. Experiment and see what works. I find once you get into the swing of things, you can develop a repetition of pattern that will create the illusion of a texture. And from the experiment, you'll learn how to do certain things and apply it to your next painting. Speaking of experimenting, I started working out some of the details of the hair. I just wanted to fool around a little bit before I do the rest of the dog. So I laid out certain colors and started applying more hairs and see how that will go. And one of the techniques I was using for the most part was laying out lines, going back and blurring them, and then applying lines again. And it kind of helped going from dark to light but that doesn't mean I didn't apply some lighter hairs early on. I wanted to establish the sense of sunlight, but the dry brushing is the thing that was very key. After applying the hairs, dry brushing and smoothing out might have made them blurry, but the layering afterwards is what helped get the illusion of hair. And this is a very tedious process, but I feel like sometimes there is no easy way out and you just have to put in the time to get the results that you want. When painting something through dimensional, if you think about the lighting, it kind of helps sculpt what you're trying to paint. Speaking of sculpting, another helpful tip is to actually use very thick paint in certain areas, especially the bright hairs. But this is something more towards the end you want to focus on because you're going to be creating physical texture and it makes sense that the thicker paint is going to stick out. Actual lighting from the room will hit it. And that will help actually give off a more illusionistic appearance of actual fur and texture. But again, this is something towards the end you want to do. Going back to the sidewalk, I tried looking very carefully at the photo. One of the things that I wanted to do is capture all the imperfections or as many as possible that I saw. Honestly, this is a real issue with homeless dogs in Greece. So all the little details will help with the realism of the issue, including the paint job that is not that great of the sidewalk. As you can see, there's little drops of paint everywhere and little pebbles and rocks and cracks I don't know how many times a car ran over that sidewalk, but there's lots of marks that could be from tires or even shoes and broken pieces. All that adds to the detail in my opinion. I also started to detail the pavement and I didn't want it to be just a giant void of gray. One of the reasons I selected the photo is because I liked all the variation of bumps and crevices the pavement had. Therefore, I tried to, instead of copying it, try to create a repetition of pattern to give the illusion of the texture and go back into it and capture things I saw from the photo as well. Some of the details I tried to paint and capture are more paint drops. Again, the person who probably painted the sidewalk didn't do that great of a job and I wanted to capture it in the painting to make it more believable. When applying detail, I was paying attention to distance. Even though there's not much distance in this painting where it's really about 10 feet, because I still wanted to get a sense of depth. So I lessened the detail in the yellow sidewalk towards the end of the painting. And towards the front, I focused on trying to see every little crevice. Pay attention also to the edges where light and darks meet. 
it helps to brighten the edge a little bit and also darken the other side that way you could create a nice illusion of an edge or corner or something sharp that just sticks out besides those I also started laying out the grass and I do plan on making that grass bigger because I don't currently like the void of gray on the top left the tiles were sculpted also and I paid attention to the photo and see how they protrude a little bit out and there is gaps between those tiles so the lines that I would paint aren't just clean lines I did them with respect to sunlight and shadow to give them that three dimensionality as if they are actually protruding out a little bit in certain sections. Nothing in the sidewalk is perfect and I wanted to capture that in the painting. As much detail as I'm going to try to capture in the background, the dog is the all star of the painting and therefore I will spend a lot of time making the dog as detailed as possible. Everything from the fur, the face, the paws, and especially the eyes. But going back to the fur, it might seem very tedious, but it is a lot of work if you want it to look right. You just gotta lay out again some of the darks and lights, and then go back into it with more lines for the hair. I mean, this is if you're trying to capture realism and believable texture. I mean, if you're trying to make an impression of the dog's hair, it's not gonna involve as much work. But I'm going for realism because this is a realistic problem in Greece. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. This was definitely a very tedious painting to do, but there's something about it that keeps me wanting to paint more and more. And I'm actually close to being finished, so stay tuned for possibly one more video or two. I'm not sure yet, depends on the footage, where I will go into more detail, particularly the dog and the imperfections of the sidewalk and pavement. Also, check out my Instagram if you want to see some finished work of mine. Not your typical painter, of course. Anyhow, stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching. Bye.